a great use of linear programming is to solve a transportation problem. We're trying to ship from one place to another, but we've got many places that we're shipping from. We've got many places that we're shipping to. Now, what do we do, right? We've got different costs to go from A to B and, and so on. A lot of little moving parts that we want to keep track of. And how do we kind of work this through? So in this particular problem, we have General Appliance Corporation, which produces refrigerators at two plants, ship them to four different distribution centers. Uh, they've determined the unit cost of shipping from any given plant to any distribution center, and you can see that in the table. Uh, we can see the plant capacities over the next planning period on the far right uh, column, and we can see distribution center demands across the bottom row. What we want to do here is we want to determine how to ship from each plant, of which we have two, to each distribution center, of which we have four, in order to minimize transportation costs whilst not exceeding available capacity and meeting customer demand. So we have a couple of requirements. So first thing is, as we always have, is we need to determine what's our decision variable. And when I read that, okay, we want to ship from each plant to each distribution center. So I have two plants, four distribution centers. It means I'm going to have eight decision variables. And I'm going to write them all out. I'm going to kind of show you a shortcut, but I'm going to give you what's going on, a little bit of what's going on. So for instance, we can let X11, one, one. that means we're shipping from plant one to distribution center one which in our case is Marietta to Cleveland. And that is just the amount shipped from Marietta, which is plant one, to Cleveland, which is distribution center one. Same idea for X2, X1, two, right? That becomes the amount shipped from Marietta except now it's going to Baltimore. Good old Balt. X13, same idea, except now it's going to Chicago. And then 14, again, rinse and repeat, and it's going to Phoenix. Go Coyotes. Okay. The next plant, which is Minneapolis, that's two, one. And so that becomes the amount shipped from Minneapolis to Cleveland, remembering that Cleveland is um, distribution center one. And we kind of continue on that with X22, two, two, X23, two, and X24, right? It's that, that same kind of, a lot of dittos in there. You know, because we're just shipping from one place to another, right? Each decision variable represents us shipping from one place to another. Now, that looks pretty cumbersome, and uh, it is. Alternatively, so alternatively, we could just go let x, i, j, i, in math, refers to the col the rows. J refers to columns. So I would be Marietta and Minneapolis, i.e. the plants that we're shipping from. J would be the place that we're shipping to. Okay. Equal amount shipped from I to J, where I equals to Marietta and Minneapolis, and J equals to Cleveland, Baltimore, Chicago, and Phoenix. Right? It's a lot shorter to represent it with the alternative. So sometimes often in this kind of problem, you see it all expressed in the alternative. Although, you know, the first one's not wrong. It's just a lot more writing. And as usual, we have our objective function, right? stage two in our process. Here, we're trying to minimize transportation costs. So we're going to minimize cost. 
We also know that each and every one of those decision variables is going to show up in our objective function. So it means we're going to have eight variables in our objective function. And of course, we see costs for each. So minimum cost is 1260 to go from Marietta to Cleveland. So X11 plus the 1435 to go from Marietta to Baltimore, aka X12, plus the 1152 to go from Marietta to Chicago, X13, plus 1758 to go from Marietta, which is X1, which is the one, to Phoenix, which is distribution center four. And I just kind of go through each one of those. Now I go two to one, right? Minneapolis to Cleveland plus 16.26. Minneapolis to Baltimore and, and so on. 8.11 X23 plus 17.92 X24. Right? Covered everybody. So now I have my minimum my minimum cost function stated and, and expressed there. Next step is I'm going to roll through my constraints. Okay, I'm going to start with the constraints in words, and then I'll worry about calculating them in a second. So I see one of my constraints is that there's a certain amount of capacity in Marietta. Okay, so I got a Marietta limit. Marietta limit. And that has to be less than or equal to 1,200. Right? I also have a Minneapolis limit. So mini, min, not min limit, but Minneapolis limit, which is less than or equal to 800. Again, we'll worry about uh, formulas in a second. Each one of the distribution centers has a certain demand, right? So, so I have my demands, right? And my demands for Cleveland, which means it's kind of equal to 150. Right? If you look at the wording, right, we don't want to exceed available capacity. That suggests it's a less than or equal to. But where it says we want to meet customer demand, that suggests that the operation we're looking for is an equal to. So I have demand for Baltimore equals 2, 350. Again, just all coming from the table. The demand for Chicago and then the demand for Phoenix. Right. all equal to 500 and then 1,000, respectively. Okay. I still have my sneaky two, right? My x, i, j have to be greater than zero for all. That's what this upside down a means, for all i and j, as well as x, i, j are non-negative. Oh, sorry, are integers. We're only shipping complete fridges here. Okay. Next step is now I'm going to fill in the, the equation. The Marietta limit, well, those are all the, everything that's shipping from Marietta to the four distribution centers. So Marietta subscript is the I is 1, and then it's I1, X11, X12, X13, plus X14. Four, which is adding up, it's just a tally, which is adding up who's shipping from Marietta to the various four distribution centers. We do the same thing with Minneapolis, except now we're shipping from plant two. So it's X21, X22, oops, get a little plus in there, plus X23, plus X24. Right. Now we kind of do a similar kind of process, except we're just looking for Cleveland. Now Cleveland comes from Marietta to Cleveland, which is X11. And then we also have coming from Minneapolis, which is the little subscript I is 2, 2, subscript J is 1, being Cleveland, right? So X11, X21. So it's easy, real easy to get lost in the subscripts, okay? Baltimore, X12 plus X22, because Baltimore is the second, is the J, right? Uh, Chicago, X13 plus X2, sorry, 23, and then Phoenix is X14 plus X24. 
Okay. So there's our whole entire mathematical formulation of the problem. Next, we'll launch into our Excel portion. On to Excel now. The setup will be a little bit different than what we saw in other types of linear programming problems. Uh, our first step is I'm just going to copy the table over. Okay, so I'm taking from the Word document. I'm, I'm going to copy the table. And do that twice. And you'll see why that is in a sec here. Okay. Now the first uh, set of, of values is this is as is as is always before. This is going to be sort of where I want my answer to go. I don't need the, the demand per se, and I don't need capacity, but it is nice to have the, the where I'm starting and where I'm going to all set out. Okay. Those are my answers are going to end up. I have my cost, same as I always do, and then, and then I have my cell with my formula for cost in it, which involves some product, just like it has before. Okay. The coefficients are these shipping values, and comma, and then my decision variables, and then close the bracket. The demand and capacity that you see down below here, I'm going to keep those for a moment, and then I'm going to get rid of them. Okay, so I have my constraints, just like I, I, I typically always have. I have my Marietta constraint. Okay, so Marietta limit, whatever. I have my Minneapolis limit. They only have so much capacity. I also only, only have so much demand in, in Cleveland and, and Baltimore, Chicago, and Phoenix. Right? So I have my Cleveland demand, my Baltimore demand, Chicago demand, and my Phoenix demand. Okay, just like I had when I was writing it up mathematically. So nothing, nothing changes there. I have my actual values, and I have my limits or my capacities. And my limits and capacities are the 1,200 for the Marietta plant, the 800 for the Minneapolis plant, the Baltimore demand of 150. I'm sorry, the Cleveland demand of 150, the Baltimore demand of 350, the Chicago demand of 500, and the Phoenix demand of 1,000. I have all those in there. I'm just going to get rid of them from where I had them before. It was convenient to have them because I was just copying and pasting it over from a Word document and they were there and they were right in front of me and they were very nice and easy to use. And so I used them, but I don't need them anymore. Okay. My actuals, I'm going to use the func sum function this time. Some product will work to just fine. It's just that you just have ones as the coefficients, so it doesn't really provide us anything useful. So Marietta, I'm just going to sum all up. All the shipments coming out of the Marietta plant, regardless of where they go. I'm going to do the same thing for Minneapolis, sum up all the shipments coming out of the Minneapolis plant, regardless of where it goes. And now I'm going to look at uh, Cleveland, Baltimore, Chicago, and Phoenix, just like we did mathematically. Those two sum, and then all the shipments destined for Cleveland. And then it equals the sum of all the shipments destined for Baltimore. And then equals to sum all the shipments destined for Chicago. And equals to sum all the shipments destined for Phoenix. And there we go. Um, for my inequalities, I'm going to have less than. I'm going to turn those into less than and equals to in a sec here. I'm going to underline them so I get an equal to sign real easily and center them. Then I'm going to go equals to, equals to, equals to, equals to. Now sometimes the equals to works just fine like it just did there for me. Sometimes it's a real pain in the butt. If you uh, find that Excel does not treat this as text, just put a little uh, single quotation mark in front of that equal to sign, and um, it'll work out for you. Okay, let's give that cost a little bit of a splash of color. And now we're all set. So we're all set. We're going to roll into, um, into Solver, and then we'll be able to solve this thing. 
So we're off to the data tab, click on the solver, set the objective, which is our cost cell. We want to minimize that, so that's important to click the min button. Changing the cells, those are our decision variables. And then I'm going to add to that the fact that the, the two plant limits have to be less than or equal to their respective capacities. Also consider that the four demands have to be equal to, again, what they actually demand. Okay. And then last, all my shipment amounts have to be into some integer value. And click OK. Change the solving method to simple XLP. And I solve. And there we go. And now I can see how much I ship from each plant to each respective distribution center.